All right, boys, today I'm going to show you why you're not going to need a 2000 watt power supply for the RTX 4000 series. Thank you to all the supporters and backers of the channel. All content on this channel is sponsor free, product sample free, and unbiased to the best of my ability. And it's all thanks to you guys that I'm able to maintain journalistic integrity in the hardware space. Okay, so Gamers Nexus released a video on transient response on these new high power draw graphics cards, what they do to power supplies, how power supplies respond to them, etc. Now that's all fine and dandy, but those problems are more concerning for the average consumer, the commoner, the pleb, etc. Right? Us frame chasers, we're not worried about that shit. Now, when Ampere launched, there was also a transient problem. Remember the whole like rear capacitor MLCC problem that was going around for a long time? What had ended up happening was that the transients were just too large, crashing the card, right? The fix for that was just undervolting the card and locking the voltage, right? Now, we're going to take that one step further in today's video. So, I have a 3090 Ti here in this gaming rig. Now, this graphics card is currently the most power-hungry card as of the recording of this video. Now, this card is also based off of the same PCB and power draw of the 4000 series when it comes out. Now, how does that correlate? This video kind of serves two purposes half of which is it going to be practical something that you can use at home the other half is more scientific about how you can see voltage scaling so what i did is i took this 3090 ti and i went to the minimum voltage that it accepts which is 900 millivolts i went all the way up in baby steps all the way up to 1.1 volt then i measured the frequency that was capable at each voltage and the power draw at each voltage now, Apex Legends is 1080p, so I also did Time Spy Extreme, which is a 4K high load, high power draw result. So the goal is twofold, right? One, we're going to see what the Samsung 8 nanometer node, what is the, this is the best silicon, what does the best silicon have to offer on that node in terms of voltage and power scaling? Two, how are you going to fix the power draw problems when the RTX 4000 series comes out? Okay, so first, I'm going to show you some footage of the Apex side-by-sides. You'll be able to see the power draw, the frequency, and the voltage of each of the slides here. Alright, so I know there's a lot of crap going on on the screen here. If this bothers you or you're going to have a seizure, you can just skip over to the next part. But this is all six of the voltages that I used and their maximum stable frequencies that I could achieve. You can kind of watch and go through them, and then also the corresponding power draw of each of the voltages. Feel free to pause the video. It's not going to be perfect. Like, what I did was I went to GPU-Z and took the average power draw of each run, just because there's so much fluctuation between what you're looking at actually in the game. So you have to use a program like GPU-Z to take the average of the entire gameplay run. Now, this problem isn't really a thing with Time Spy Extreme where it's so repeatable, but for a game like Apex Legends, yeah, you got to use the average. Now, if you take a look at the 900 millivolt number, and then you go look at the 1.1 volt number, the power draw difference is really, like, less than 100 watts, actually, which is really, really good. So, if you're playing in 1080p, you might as well just crank that shit all the way and get the highest frequency you can. 1080p just really does not pull that much power. Okay, so if that seemed confusing, don't worry. I'm going to put it all in a nice line graph for you at the end so you'd be able to visually see the power draw versus frequency, okay? Now, let's get into some Time Spy Extreme side-by-sides here so then you can really see the difference in power draw. All right, so here's the side-by-side -side of Time Spy. Now, just look at the power draw difference between the first one and the last one. It is astronomical. Now, in the last one, I actually did stop the benchmark because the graphics card started pulling way too much power, and it was hitting almost 75 Celsius, and I was concerned for the safety of my card. It's a $2,000 graphics card, and I'm not going to blow it up for a benchmark, right? So it wasn't a crash. It was just me turning it off. Now, for Time Spy, I only used the first run 
and the first run actually spits out an FPS number. So since this is an actual apples to apples run to run benchmark, we can look at the FPS increase based on those frequencies that we have up top. Now keep in mind there are only five results here because I canceled the 1.1 volt result. So you can see from the bottom 900 millivolts all the way up to the uh, 1050 millivolts, the FPS difference in a 4K high power draw game is 6 FPS. So if I was using this card in a 4K game, I would keep it at 900 millivolts or maybe that 925 millivolts is that sweet spot there with 75 FPS. Seems like it doesn't pull too much more power and you, get, you do get a little bit of a sweet spot there. Okay, now here's what it looks like visually on a graph. All right, so here is the visual graph. Now you can see at the bottom here, the X axis is the millivolts on the left and the frequency on the right. And the Y axis here is the power draw. Now you can kind of see this blue line here is 1080p, the one that we collected for Apex. It doesn't really end up pulling too much power the more voltage that you crank into this thing. It seems like actually the sweet spot might be kind of 1050 millivolts here if you know what i'm saying this seems like a good frequency to millivolt range for power draw now in 4k it pick it's a completely different picture here now in 4k it seems like 950 millivolts is going to be your sweet spot right after 950 this starts shooting up really sharply right and it, it kind of does in 1080p as well but it's the 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 upward trend is not as drastic as it is in 4k so with a graph like this you can kind of see where the silicon of your card speaks to you so what you would do is if you were playing a 1080p esports game you would have an over overclock profile for 1080p that looks like this and then you would have another profile that looks like this for 4k and this essentially alleviates your power supply transient issue now where transients come into play here is uh i had a power unlimited bios in my card so it didn't really bounce but let's say uh lovelace comes out and it has a 450 watt power limit which would be right about here this would be the power limit now what the graphics card will do when it hits this power limit is going to go up here it's going to hit it and then it's going to bounce back down to compensate then it's going to bounce back up then it's going to bounce back down and it's this constant bouncing factor like this that is what's messing up the transients and the power supply now what you do to alleviate that is just what i showed you before you can either remove the power limit and let this thing go to the moon, which I do not recommend, or you just lock the voltage around here somewhere. And poof, it's never going to be doing that bouncing stuff when it hits any power limit. So how do these results all relate to next gen? Well, if you are playing at 1080p or 1440p, you don't have to worry about all those crazy ass power draw numbers that you're seeing. Now, if you're playing in 4K though, that's where the undervolting comes in. That solves the problem right there. So when the RTX 4000 series comes out, you basically have to go through the same process that I did here, where you try different millivolts at a time, scaling your way up. And then the silicon will speak to you. The silicon itself will tell you when it starts drawing more power than the performance it's actually getting back. And then that's just where you stop. That solves all power draw, transient, all those issues it solves it all anyway guys i hope you learned something we don't pay attention to leaks we don't pay attention to doom and gloom apocalyptic type stuff where there's a will there is always a way to make your stuff work and get the most frames possible anyway if you like the content hit that subscribe button do all that youtube seo stuff like share subscribe comment down below what you thought about the samsung 8 nanometer node and i will see you guys in the next one talk to you later